Hello and welcome to Gleese's video tutorial, Introducing FEMA Flood Maps. This is a publicly available tool created by the Federal Emergency Management Agency's National Flood Insurance Program, developed to help users access local flood data and download flood risk maps. This video is meant to provide additional guidance for potential end users in the Great Lakes region and to help navigate and better understand the tool and its application. In this video, I'll first walk through the tool and highlight key features and outputs that will be helpful for users in assessing flood risk in their area. Then, I'll provide an example demonstration explaining how to interpret map components. Now, I'm going to transition to opening the tool and briefly explain how to navigate its key functions. In my browser, I'll enter FEMA flood maps. The search results should populate the FEMA.gov site and upon opening, I will see the FEMA Flood Maps homepage. This includes information about the tool, guidance documents, and other resources, some of which I'll be mentioning in this tutorial. To access the flood maps, I want to navigate to the How to View and Obtain Flood Maps section. Here I'll see two options, the Map Service Center and the National Flood Hazard Layer, or NFHL. I like to start with the Map Service Center, but we'll be reviewing the NFHL shortly so I'll click this button to open the Map Service Center to get us started. The Map Service Center is the official public source for flood maps. On this page, you'll find a search bar to enter an address, place, or longitude and latitude coordinate. I'll begin by entering the location we'll be exploring for our example demonstration, which is Douglas, Michigan. After selecting Search, I'm taken to a new page that tells me that this product is for the city of the village of Douglas and also provides a flood map number and a date of when this map project was created. There are also options for downloading my map area. You'll notice that both download options include the acronym FIRM, which stands for Flood Insurance Rate Map. One download option is for a dynamic map, also referred to as a firmet or a print map. This is downloaded as a PDF color document and will align with the area you see in the map viewer below. Or you can download the firm panel, which will create a map of the entire flood zone your location is within and be downloaded as a PNG file. Based on your project objectives, you'll select the appropriate download option. We'll look at both of these options in the example demonstration. Since this tool was created by FEMA in partnership with communities interested in mapping flooding in their area, at times when the landscapes change, and flooding zones shift, there may be amendments and other changes, which you can view under Changes to this firm. There is a blue question mark further explaining the formal procedure to make changes, which can help interpret previous revisions. You can also view what revisions, amendments, and revalidations have been made in this area. I can see that four revalidations have been made. And by clicking here, I see that these have been made as recently as 2023. This is important information so I can speak to how up-to-date these flood zones are. I'll scroll down and shift to discussing the map view and national flood hazard layer. First, this map view is interactive, so I have the ability to click and pan the map or zoom in and out using my mouse. There's also the plus and minus sign to zoom in and out. You'll have the option to change the base map using this button with four squares in the lower right corner. And moving on to interpreting the map items, I can see there are some colors visualized on the map and can use the legend below to understand what I'm seeing. For example, in blue, I can gather that this is the flood hazard area. You can also review the layer symbology in the list view by clicking the three lines in the upper right corner of the map. Although not everything you'll see in the legend may be visible in your map area. I like to use the National Flood Hazard layer to get a better understanding of what this map is telling me because I can make data selections based on what I'm interested in viewing. This is the National Flood Hazard layer, which provides the same information as the previous page and allows you to download similar maps. I'm given this pop-up explaining the service and I'll select OK to move forward. Since I've already entered my location in the Map Service Center, my area of interest is already populated on the map. Quickly I'll explain what functionality is available in the upper left corner. 
This includes a search bar if you need to set another location or you're launching your project in this viewer, zoom in and zoom out buttons, a home default extent which takes you to the global map, a my location button. This only works if you enable location sharing on your device. The print tool. This is displayed by default when opening the NFHL. A measurement tool to measure an area or distance. And a base map gallery if you'd like to select a specific imagery file. In the upper right corner, we have a legend tab explaining everything that could be displayed in an area. Again, this may show more options than what is displayed in your area. And a layers list. There is a lot of data within this tool, so this is worth exploring on your own. But in general, there are three main groups available and active by default, which I can tell by the blue check marks. These are effective firm panels, which is the flood zone data, NFHL group, this is where you can view firm panels, political jurisdictions, and much more data options, and coastal barrier resources system areas. This is where you can view protected or non-protected areas. Now, I want to demonstrate how to use those features and interpret the results with an example. So let's explore Douglas, Michigan more. Going back to the layer list, I want to keep the effective firm panels active so I can see where digital flood data is available. I'm also keeping the coastal barrier data active to see if the area is protected or not. Keeping NFHL active and using the dropdown to review data, I'm going to remove all layers so that I can customize what data I want to view. I'm going to add firm panels to see the flood zones. I'm also going to select political jurisdictions to see who is involved with decision making in these areas and who should be involved in flood response. The flood hazard boundaries and zones are also important for flood planning and preparedness. And lastly, I want to see how many coastal gauges and other gauges are present for tracking water level in my area. Customizing these layers displayed on the map is a great use of the NFHL that isn't available in the Map Service Center, and I encourage you to explore this data more for your own projects. I like to take some samples of what data is present in the area before I print my map, and I do this by clicking on the map over different symbology, and this results in a pop-up telling me about the data. You can also use these pop-ups to download the panel map or the GIS data for the panel. Overall, I can observe around the riverbanks the coastal floodplain in blue and that it overlaps with the floodway in red stripes. I can also see where both of these zones intersect with the towns of Douglas and Saugatuck. Some of the legend icons and symbology can be difficult to interpret, especially to new users. I would suggest using the How to Read a Flood Map resource from FEMA to help you interpret these legend items. I've explored the area pretty well, and now I'm going to print my map. I'm going to print both the firm panel and the format of the area for my records. Going back to the print toolbox under the input tab, I'm dropping a pin where I want my map to center around. Under size, I'm selecting format, and I have the option of a PDF or a PNG. I'm going to choose PNG because I want to include this in a presentation. After I select Run, a link to my new map will be under the Output tab. I can open this and save it locally. On the Vermet map, I see the flood map number in green, the flood risk zone in blue, and the jurisdiction boundary clearly, which separates land jurisdiction, in this case between the two cities. I'm also noticing special flood hazard area codes like AE, which represents a unique hazard area possibly where insurance is required or other special cases. You can learn about these codes in the FEMA user guide that is attached to this video's accompanying guidance document. I'm going to repeat these steps, but this time print the firm panel as a PDF. I'll select full firm in the print tab and hit run. When it's finished running, the link will generate and open to a new tab for viewing and downloading. And then I'll go ahead and click on this. This displays the full firm. Again, this is the entire flood zone your selected location is in. And this concludes our demonstration video. 
I hope that this was a useful walkthrough and that this video helped you better understand how to use the FEMA flood maps. This video was created by Gleesa, a climate adaptation partnership team funded by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, dedicated to helping the Great Lakes region build lasting and equitable climate resilience. Under a project funded by Michigan Sea Grant, this is one of several tutorial videos intended to help make climate, weather, and coastal resilience tools more accessible to end users in the Great Lakes region. There are also accompanying guidance documents available for each of the tools covered in these tutorial videos, available at the link in the video description. The guidance document contains contact information if you have questions about the tool. This video and accompanying guidance documents were created for educational purposes only and are in no way affiliated with FEMA flood maps or its developers.